Welcome to Ray's Garage, I'm Ray Cornelia. Today we have a small project with a little machining to do. Let's get started. So my mom asked me the other day, uh, with, with all those machines you got there, you think you can make me uh, something out of metal? So I was like, well, it depends. Um, I can only do certain things. I'm kind of limited uh, to when you say make things out of metal. So she said, well, I need a new address label for the house. She said that old wooden one you made me years ago, just, you know, the weather killed it with all the snow and the ice. And so she wants something made out of metal that's going to last a little longer than uh, 15 years, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, um, I went to the hardware store and picked up these little numbers. Uh, they're hollow in the back. You know, if we would have made them from scratch, they'd be solid steel or solid aluminum. But anyway, uh, these are nickel coated steel. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I have this piece of aluminum plate that's eighth inch thick. And I got these um, these metric three millimeter screws that actually sit in here and they countersink, which is kind of nice because the ones it came with uh, were wood screws. So basically I'm going to drill and tap this. Uh, of course I'm going to cut out, you know, an oval shape for these to mount to. Um, so our machining job basically today is pretty simple. Um, make these little standoffs. I got to make six of them. Uh, these are 400 thousandths uh, long, eighth inch center hole and faced on both sides. Uh, so they sit flat on this plate. And then I have to um, line these numbers up. Uh, these holes for each number are in different places. So I'm going to have to lay them out, mark the holes and, and drill and tap them uh, for these screws that I got at the hardware store. They're three millimeter by 20 millimeters long. So basically, they're just going to end up sticking out of the plate a little bit, um, and I can just uh, grind the backs off, but I do want them to go all the way through the quarter inch plate, I mean, uh, eighth inch plate. So let's go over to the lathe, and uh, I'll show you my setup for making these little deals. Got to make uh, five more of them. So let me uh, reposition and get started. My setup is pretty simple here. Uh, just have the uh, dial indicator on a mag base uh, so I can determine, you know, my zero and 400 thousandths for the thing. Uh, an eighth inch drill bit, and I got a um, parting tool that I ground myself here, and I'll take that off and show you. Um, basically, I took a normal parting tool, and I grooved it um, real thin here. Let me see if I can get in here so you can see it. I grooved it real thin, so it cuts off nice and clean. Um, it doesn't really fit in my import parting blade holder, um, but it does fit this in this this much of it right here. So I basically have it in there. Um, this is ground to exactly uh, 25 thousandths thick, and I'm going to show you why I did it this way instead of just using a normal parting blade. Um, I wish this thing would focus, man. I'm sorry. Um, hey, how about if I do this? There you go. So that's just a uh, 25,000 stick parting blade. All right, so let me cut and I'll bring you in. Okay, the reason I did this, here, let me get the towel stock out of the way, is so I could bring my carriage uh, to its zero point on the dial indicator, and then bring this guy in, and basically use it as a stop, just the tip of it as a stop right here. Lock down the chuck. Bring this back. Uh, do my center drilling first and then since I'm on zero on the dial indicator come over 425 thousandths and then every single part will come out exactly right um, and it also saves me from having to face them because it's actually pretty accurate um, I made sure I ground it 
you know, so it didn't, it does have a taper on the leading edge and the, and the uh, trailing edge, but it still cuts a pretty good part. Uh, the, that first one I did, I showed you earlier, came out to be 400,000. So um, I'll just repeat it uh, five more times and we should be good to go. So um, I need to reposition, reposition this camera so I can video it while we're machining. So now we're going to go in 425. One, two, three, four, 25. part rinse and repeat Okay, set our carriage back to zero. And I'm working around the camera stand here, so. Oh, well, it's a little awkward. Bring our part to zero. One, two, three, four twenty five. We'll get our little Noga whirly bird and clean those bad boys up. Standoffs are hot off the lathe and a uh, little deburring is in order. This has got to be one of my favorite deburring tools from Noga. Uh, don't know the part number, but I call it my whirly bird. Great deburring tool, man. Makes things simple and easy, and I like simple and easy. This thing will deburr up to about three-eighths. 
down to shit I don't know maybe zero maybe not that fine but all I know is it works good and I like it they make different tips for them um, I'm not sure if they make a bigger tip but it'll be nice to to get up to half inch holes maybe Okay, next step, um, got to lay out the plate. Not sure of the shape I'm going to put these on. So I'm going to just play with a pencil a little bit and maybe trace something out. I'm thinking maybe maybe an oval, oval shape with a border. Not sure yet. I got to think about it for a minute. So anyway, that's the next step. <laughs> 